Um, well, yes, it's been it's really been uh, uh, two weeks that have been very intense. Uh, we've um, excavated already 15 um, trenches, one by one meter trenches, many test pits, and we found a lot of really interesting information that um, links uh, the Venezuelan coast. Uh, in the 17th and 18th centuries with uh, Bonaire and with the small uninhabited island of, of Klein Bonaire. Uh, there was uh, at the time a thriving informal commerce that was occurring. Uh, the cacao from Venezuela was being brought here possibly to the site where there's a ruin now uh, that was maybe a warehouse where this cacao was stored. Um, and we've been digging in the campsite uh, that was in front where we found uh, glass bottle remains, um, bowls of uh, Dutch Delft. Uh, we've also found uh, criollo ware, so ceramics that I possibly think are from Venezuela uh, that still have to have uh, analyses done by me uh, back in, in, in Barcelona in my university. Um, but it's, it's a really rich site um, in terms of uh, understanding better what occurred in the 18th century on Bonaire, where we really don't know much. Even historians don't know much about that time. Um, the people who brought this, uh, who were they? Were they Indians? Who were they? Yeah, so the people who would come from the coast of Venezuela, uh, they, were, they were very varied. I mean, uh, there were some indigenous people who would come as well, uh, sometimes even in canoes, in small boats. Um, uh, Pardos or uh, Criollo Venezuelans would come. Um, the Sephardim, so the, 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 the Jews from Curaçao, were actually very involved in this trade. They were the main movers. Um, so they would go with their ships um, that were also manned by, uh, by enslaved, by free uh, people of African descent, uh, indigenous people, uh, Spaniards. They were mixed crews. Um, and the people who were probably camped in front of um, the warehouse I, uh, it's still, uh, the research is developing, I still have to bring all the information together in the coming months. But they were probably either indigenous Bonarians or freed people um, from the island. Uh, they probably weren't Dutch. Uh, we found two cannonballs, we found a smaller one, uh, possibly a three pounder, and a much larger one. Um, I think they were, they were probably fired at the island because there were no gun emplacements there, I suppose. Um, we did find the hardware from a musket, so they were defending the, what now is the ruin, the, the warehouse. Probably they had cacao there stored, cacao was very valuable. But the cannon, yeah, the cannon, the, the, the balls were probably fired at the site. I still have to see if there's any documents that, that, that maybe mention this, um, that maybe some English uh, privateers pass by through here, or even some Spanish Corsairs, which, who were always harassing the, the cacao ships that were coming and going to Curaçao in here. Um, you have all this information, what is the next step? So the next step is uh, analysis. Uh, in the coming months I'll, I'll, I'll bring together the documentary evidence, the archaeological evidence, um, also the chemical analysis of some of these ceramics to determine if they're really from Venezuela, which would be a, a very big deal. It would be something for the first time done here. Um, and uh, all of this, all of these remains will be stored in Skal, in Museo Boneiro. Um, I have the intention, uh, together with uh, the staff from Skal, uh, to make uh, an exposition, so a case where all of this will be uh, available for the people of Bonaire to go and see. Um, there's going to be a few publications, a few scientific publications, and also publications for the public um, here on Bonaire. Um, once I have all the information integrated and I have a better picture of what happened. Um, but the idea is that everybody knows about this because this site is unique um, and we don't know anything about the 18th century pretty much on Bonaire.